Uh, my name is Alex. I'm the director of Outer Wilds. This is Sarah Shally, producer. Um, Outer Wilds is a game of cosmic backpacking. Um, it is a first-person space exploration game. Um, it also features miniature planets. It is also very strongly about exploration. Um, and it combines two things. It combines flying in a spaceship um, between little miniature planetoids that are simulated in real time around the sun and being out in a tent at night under the stars and roasting marshmallows. So one of the things we're going to do, um, a lot of exploration games, um, it's very much you just kind of go and you're like, oh, that looks cool, and you kind of just go check it out, and there's no real cost associated. So we're going to bring in this notion of planning before you set out on your expedition. Um, and so also, we, uh, the, the telescope from Wind Waker was a substantial source of inspiration. Uh, we have a telescope that you can use to look at distant planets, um, but you will also pick up signals from those planets, so you, you'll hear audio. Um, there are other travelers out there. Um, some of them will play like instruments near campfires, and you will pick up their instruments, and you'll know based on what you hear through your little telescope um, what things are on different planets around the solar system. We also have this notion of um, you'll, you're going to have a backpack that's essentially an inventory system, and you kind of outfit yourself at the beginning of each playthrough um, in preparation for what you're trying to achieve. Um, space exploration games, so of course the universe ends at some point. Um, the way this is structured is each playthrough, right now we're thinking that a playthrough is going to be about 20 minutes, at the end of which the sun explodes and wipes out everything. Um, but the game is meant to be played more than one time, and every time you play, you can choose to go different places at different times. Um, if anyone's ever played Majora's Mask, um, that's kind of a baseline that we're kind of jumping off from, but the difference is, hope oh, that's a nice slide, the worlds evolve over time. Um, so this is like my go-to example. Um, we have a nice planet, and it's orbiting the sun, and over the course of a single playthrough, it goes from being an ice planet to a water planet to a crusty dry planet, and then it kind of disintegrates into this lava, lava fiery explosion. So when you choose to visit it, drastically determines or changes what you can do on this world. Um, and so every time you play, you have to make decisions based on your abilities and your resources. Where do you want to go, and what do you want to achieve at what times? <coughs> Um, and so the other way it differs from the sort of time loop of um, Groundhog Day Majora's Mask is that even though things start out in a similar fashion and they always end with the sun exploding, um, we're using non-deterministic physics. Um, and the metaphor we use is sandcastles. So you build a sandcastle and the waves come in and it slowly falls apart and changes over time. Um, some planets will disintegrate. This is a screenshot from an old prototype where these meteors come and break this planet apart. Um, but the way they break it apart um, is different every time you play it. So there's a certain level of uncertainty. So art style that we're going for um, is very painterly. Um, and it kind of has this like rugged outdoorsy sense to it. Um, you can see here everything has this sort of a, like rustic vibe, things that you would find like if you were backpacking out in the woods, but with a slightly alien feel to it. Um, definitely going for these sort of these orange pools of light in kind of the colder, um, cooler tones of like the purples and blues of outer space. And the, all of these are things I pulled off the interwebs, except for that one in the upper left hand corner. There are going to be these other travelers, um, and you can see they all kind of have this backpacking traveler look to them. Um, so this is the shocking twist to the presentation, we need artists. Um, we're looking specifically for an art director to hold us to this sort of um, art style. And then, of course, two environmental and character concept artists. We're also going to have some creatures. Um, you'll see one of them in the quick video reel we're going to show. Uh, we need 2D texture artists for all of the planets and materials we're planning on making, uh, 3D modelers, and a rigger. Um, and so we're going to show a video that we showed um, just at the demo day, or that demo day, the, uh, the advanced game pitch last May. Um, and so this is pretty old stuff, but you'll kind of get a sense. It's always good to see stuff, um, not the art stuff. Um, so this is a quick prototype um, of teaching players how to fly the ship um, using a model spacecraft. Um, people usually aren't very good at it at first. It's pretty difficult. We're using pretty accurately modeled Newtonian physics. There are no, there's no friction in space. Um, and so we're going to spend a lot of time first semester creating systems and autopilot systems and things like that to help players um, understand the concept of what it means for frictionless space. So that's about the size of the planets we're going for, too. Um, and I think the next one of these shows that they're actually, so these little planets are these, these planets, um, they're actually moving. 
Um, they're not just fixed in space, they're actually simulated and moving around the sun. So one of the things we're really gonna focus on is this concept of uh, relative uh, motion and reference frames. Um, so we have these kind of dynamic day-night cycles. Things will change based on whether it is day or night. Um, we have mechanics that worry around those kind of things. Um, yeah, we speed up time. You can see that these things are actually moving around using the physics system. Um, using, we're using Unity, by the way, so this is a physics. Um, this is an example from an old prototype of a world. Um, the asteroids are coming in, and when these pillars get hit, these pieces go flying off. So there's no telling you know, when the piece that you're standing on is going to go flying away. Um, this is a very bizarre prototype where things that you're not looking at move. <laughs> um, it's a take on quantum mechanics. So one of the planets is going to be, every planet's going to feature these kind of weird take on um, just physical concepts. Giant interstellar anglerfish. Um, would currently, so just to clarify, there's no combat in the game per se. Um, mostly, most of the gameplay is built around overcoming these sort of dynamic hazard systems. Um, roasting marshmallows because you escaped the anglerfish. Um, good job. Um, but it, like for example, the anglerfish, they're just another hazard and they're things that you have to deal with in these environments. But we don't have per se, like you're not going to shoot the anglerfish with you know, a space rifle. And then the final thing in this prototype, after we eat our marshmallows. Um, and that's going to be, by the way, a very fully realized uh, mini simulation. Um, we're planning on making that marshmallow the most detailed texture you've ever seen in your life. Because um, we really like the, co the, the contrast between that system and the sun exploding. And this would be the end of a playthrough. Um, you can see it's meant to look kind of like a fireworks show. We're not going for gloom and doom. Um, we're going through this constant cosmic cycle where you're learning about the world and you're traveling through it. And you, know, you take a time to roast a marshmallow and watch the world end. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. It's a pretty serious game. It's a pretty, it's a, you know, it's, it's a little, it has a darker edge to it, but, um, but not here. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Yeah.